Hi, and welcome to a digital book talk from Massanutten Regional Library. Today's book talk is a middle grade book talk, and we are focusing on books by the author Christopher Paul Curtis. Now, Mr. Curtis grew up in Flint, Michigan, and you'll find that a number of his books are set in Flint, Michigan. Not all of them, but a good few. This first one here, The Watsons Go to Birmingham, 1963, is one of those books whose setting includes Flint, Michigan. So, this was the first novel that Christopher Paul Curtis wrote. And as I said, it is set in Flint, Michigan. And it's the winter of 1962 when this story begins. And by the time it ends, it'll be the fall of 1963. Our main character is Kenny. And uh, Kenny's family is known around Flint as the Weird Watsons, and for lots of good reasons. He has a younger sister, Joetta, and she has been led to believe that she has to be way overdressed in the winter because her mama is a southerner from Alabama, and if she's not overdressed, she will freeze solid, and then she'll have to be picked up by the city garbage trucks. Kenny, Kenny's a good kid. He does well in school. He tries to meet his hardworking parents' expectations. And then there's the big brother. Um, he, he has a string of misdeeds. And, um, well, let's just say his mom and dad decide that this boy needs to go south and see Grandmother Sands and... Uh, See what a different way of life is in Birmingham. Now, for them to travel south to Birmingham in this day and age, 1962-63, they have to make some very careful preparations for their trip because they cannot count on food or housing being available on the road once they cross into the south. Um, they do go south. There is a fateful day when a local church is bombed and Kenny goes running looking for his sister because she was supposed to be at that church. And, and yes, there are very, very poignant moments like that, very sad type moments, but there are also those funny ones. Um, the, the thing that always stuck with me about this book was the image of one of the boys daring another one to kiss the car window in winter. You know what happens when you kiss certain things in winter in Michigan? Let's just say your lips are going to never feel the same again after they've been stuck. I suggest reading the book to find out more. Our second book today is Bud Not Buddy. For this book, um, Mr. Curtis won a Newbery Award and a Coretta Scott King Award. So in this story, we are also starting off in Flint, Michigan, and it's 1936. Times may be hard, and 10-year-old Bud is motherless. Not maybe, he is. He's motherless, and he's on the run. He's running away from a bad foster home. But he's got a few things going for him. One, he has his own suitcase filled with his own important secret things. Two, he is the author of Bud Caldwell's Rules and Things for Having a Funner Life and Making a Better Liar Out of Yourself. And three, his mama never told him who his father was, but she left a clue. Flyers, flyers of Herman E. Calloway and his famous band, the Dusky Devastators of the Depression. Bud's got an idea. He's got an idea that those flyers will lead him to his father. And once he decides to hit the road and find his, uh, or this mystery man, nothing can stop him. Not hunger, not fear, not vampires, not even Harmon E. Calloway himself. So will Harmon E. Calloway turn out to be Bud's father? You have to read the book to find out. Our third book today is The Mighty Miss Malone. If you've carefully read Bud Not Buddy, you might actually recognize our main character, Deza Malone, 
as she did make a quick appearance over here in Bud Not Buddy. So the Mighty Miss Malone, we have um, Deza Malone's family. We are a family on a journey to a place called Wonderful. This is the motto of Deza's family. 12-year-old Deza is the smartest girl in her class in Gary, Indiana, singled out by teachers for a special path in life. But the Great Depression hits Gary, Indiana, and it hits hard, and there are no jobs for black men. When her father leaves to find work, Deza, her mother, and her older brother Jimmy go off in search of him, and they end up in a Hooverville camp outside of Flint, Michigan. Jimmy's beautiful voice inspires him to leave the camp to be a performer, while Deza and her mother find a new home and cling to the hope that they will someday find her father. The twists and turns of this story reveal the devastation of the Depression and prove that Deza truly is the mighty Miss Malone. Read the book to find out the rest of her story. The last book I'm going to talk about today is Elijah of Buxton. For this book, uh, Christopher Paul Curtis won a Coretta Scott King Award, and this book was also named as a Newbery Honor Book. In this story, we have 11-year-old Elijah, Elijah Freeman. He is the first child born into freedom in Buxton, Ontario a settlement of runaway slaves near the American border. He's best known in his hometown as the boy who made a memorable impression on Frederick Douglass. Memorable. He upchucked on him. <laughs> but things changed in 1859 when a former slave steals money from Elijah's friend, money that this friend has been saving up to buy his family out of captivity in the South. Elijah embarks on a dangerous journey to America in pursuit of the thief, and he discovers firsthand the unimaginable horrors of the life that his parents fled, a life from which he will always be free if he can find the courage to get back home. Does the gentleman get his money back? Is the thief caught? Does Elijah make it back to Canada? You have to read this book to find out. These were just four of the titles by Christopher Paul Curtis. He does have other titles as well. And I suggest that you check out a book by the author Christopher Paul Curtis today.